Welcome to Unit 12 of the TESOL course at Southern Utah University. This video provides an introduction to second language acquisition. We'll define the term, talk about how it relates to TESOL professionals, we'll discuss some differences between first language learning and second language learning, and then we'll discuss a couple uh, theories about acquisition. So SLA stands for Second Language Acquisition, and it generally describes language learning beyond someone's first language when they're an adult or an older child. And so this distinction is made between learning a language as a very young child, um, whether it's your first or a second language or a third language, when you're a very young child, that experience tends to be very similar to learning as a first language. Um, and so second language acquisition is um, described as learning as an older child or an adult when we already have a good grasp of a language system. The reason that teachers and TESOL professionals need to understand second language acquisition is that it helps them better understand the learning process so that they can design better materials and instructional experiences for learners. It also helps teachers develop empathy for the challenges that learners face as they go through this learning process. In fact, many teachers can be inspired um, to them want to learn a language so they can develop even greater empathy and, and have a better sense of how to design materials for other learners. Um, so learning and understanding about second language acquisition benefits teachers and their students. Some of the main differences between first language learning, or L1, and second language learning, or L2, is the setting. So first language learning tends to be more naturalistic. This means that there isn't a formal classroom and a formal teacher. Instead, the learner is learning through life experiences and gaining language through those experiences. With second language learning, we tend to see more classroom instruction. Um, and learners are learning maybe from books or other materials that are designed to teach the language explicitly. That doesn't happen in the first language. Uh, in the first language, um, it's not as conscious. Um, uh, young, very young children are not thinking about, here, I need to acquire language, I need to know the verb for this. And instead, um, it seems more that uh, there's an unconscious process that's going on as they try to communicate their needs and um, work with others. With second language learning, um, there's already an understanding of how a language system works. And so the learner is using that framework to help them acquire the new language and trying to notice the similarities and differences between those languages. Um, there's also a difference in terms of time. First language learning takes a long time. There is a much longer silent period. Um, whereas with second language learning, learners are generally much more motivated and because they have greater um, cognitive ability, um, they're more focused. And so they can learn that second language much more quickly than someone uh, would learn that same language as a first language learner. One of the leading theorists in second language acquisition is Stephen Krashen, and we've talked about him before, um, but he uh, proposes the idea that there is a difference between acquisition and learning. So acquisition, according to him, is a natural and subconscious process. Um, we can't force ourselves to acquire the language, whereas learning is more instructional and conscious. And the reason he makes this distinction is to, especially to help teachers and learners understand that just because uh, language has been taught and learned and practiced doesn't necessarily mean that it's been acquired. And I think we can all relate to this experience as a teacher or learner. Just because maybe a vocabulary word or a verb form was taught to students um, once or maybe even twice doesn't mean that they've acquired it into their language system yet and are good at using it. It can take time and practice for that acquisition to happen. Now part of that acquisition process might be what Krashen refers to as the monitor hypothesis and says that there's a part of the brain that can pay attention to language and it's making some conscious uh, effort to focus on the language. Um, and then whether it's the input from our reading and listening or the output from our speaking and writing, um, we can monitor how that language is being used, we can edit it, we can pay attention to it, and that it's important to do that if we want to move from learning towards acquisition. Krashen also talks about um, the order of acquisition. 
And it says if we think about all of the structures and components of learning a language, some of these features are very simple and some are more complex. And naturally, learners are going to acquire the simpler structures uh, before they're ready to acquire the more complex ones. Um, and so this will defy um, instructional and experiences. So if a teacher says, hey, you know, here's a structure that I think my learners really need for what they're going to do and tries to teach that structure and it's really complex, they can teach it all they want and the learners can practice with it all they want, but they're not very likely to acquire it because they haven't developed the foundational simple structures first. So it really is best that when we're teaching a language, we ensure that learners have the foundational features of the language, and then we move them towards more complex ones. If we don't, we may really be wasting their time in focusing time and attention on things that they're not ready to acquire anyways. So this is important as we plan our lessons and we look at curriculum, that we make sure that learners have foundational things. And if they don't, we teach those things before we move into other structures. So in this video, we've defined second language acquisition and said why it's important for TESOL, TESOL professionals to understand it. We've talked about differences between first and second language learning, and we've discover, uh, discussed some hypotheses about acquisition.